so yesterday we were at uh, analyzing the amortized cost of delete operation so the delete operation says that you whenever you delete you have to delete from the min row node okay. and you detach all these children and attach them to the list of roots and uh, uh, then you perform consolidation or linking operation correct so all these costs have to be added up to make the amortized cost okay so this is what happens uh, theoretically and then there was this uh, you malloc a uh, malloc array of pointers and you uh, use a pointer current pointer and you have to navigate through all the routes okay while you are navigating you depending on the number of children the rank of or the degree of each node you use the pointer point to that particular root okay and if there is already a pointer pointing to that root that time you do the merge operation okay so all this has to be considered in the amortized cost of delete operation okay is the delete operation clear to you all how, we, how are we going about the delete operation okay and then you can free this free this and so these are separate root nodes and you can again form a list of it okay so this is what happens ultimately you may have this kind of tree so in our uh, analysis of uh, amortized analysis of any of the operation we look at the two factors so one factor is the true cost of some operation okay so say true cost of some operation plus to this we also add the change in the potential function that took place okay so the the amortized cost is summation of these two values for all the operations now the potential function that we defined was what was the formula for the potential function what was the formula the number of root nodes plus 2 into number of mark nodes okay so this is the formula and when you say the difference or the change in this value that means we are trying to find out the value of this at ith instance or i plus 1th instance minus the value of the potential function at ith instance so this gives you the value of difference or the change in the potential function okay so whenever we are talking about the amortized complexity we are talking about the sum of these two values together now why are we using something which is a potential function having number of roots and number of two into number of mark nodes so there are some operations we say they compensate for the operation which was low cost earlier okay or they are like account keeping type uh, complexity that you are doing okay so suppose uh, to give you an example something like Say you have a professor P1 and you have professor P2 who are going to take the lectures, combined lectures or they are going to do the co-teaching for some subject. Okay. So, so alternately, in alternate week, each one of them is going to take the lecture. So, ye week mein this professor took, week 2 mein this professor took, week 3 mein again this person took. So that means that in future he has to compensate it this extra lecture that Professor 2 has taken at some point. Okay. So any operation that we are doing, so it is like you're keeping clear-cut accounts of what is happening, and you are using up from the cost that you are storing the, from your low-cost operation because in future it is going to add up 
it is going to add up still and go this uh, this problem has happened since yesterday so on its own it makes that some shape and it doesn't go there okay so when you say that the uh, the definition the formula for the potential function is total number of root nodes plus total number of uh, mark nodes into two uh, why are we collecting? We are. Why are we accumulating this information? Or why do we want to know the change? So we started with some initial value of R and two M. Okay. We perform some operation. Suppose what happens if you perform insert operation? Your uh, number of roots go up by one. Okay. And uh, your two M remains as it is earlier. Okay, so the change in the potential is one. So we have accumulated this one in our potential function. We have stored it or we remember it in our difference. We say the difference in the potential that happened by insertion was one. And why are we trying to remember this or why are we keeping account of this in our potential function is because when you perform, uh, say when you perform link operation or when you perform consolidation operation, this consolidation operation, consolidation or merging operation will be directly proportional to the number of trees that you have. Okay, the number of roots that you have. Do you agree with this? So the consolidation function will be proportional to the number of trees that you are having. Okay, so but then insert operation itself was taking complexity one, but it is going to add up to the complexity of the consolidation in future because your number of trees are going to increase. Okay, so that is how we go on accumulating in our. Uh, in the potential function and use this to compensate or to in future make our total complexity may be less than actually it is okay similarly why are we accumulating 2m why not m why not just t plus n okay what is the significance of marked note can somebody re recall and tell it is same uh, we did this explanation here yeah what is the significance of marked note? So colored notes the uska kya significance tha? Anyone? What was the significance of this? Did we not discuss this? If we haven't discussed, not we'll discuss. Not let the tree get too heavy. No, but uh, where did we use whether it is marked or not marked? Where did we use the concept of whether the node is marked and based on that our algorithm was the steps of algorithms were performed? Did we do this? Or we did not discuss this? Please tell me, maybe I don't remember. If we haven't discussed this, then, okay, did we do decrease operation? Did we do decrease operation? No. Did we not do decrease operation? Okay. In that case, when we do decrease operation, uh, I don't remember this. Then I need to explain this first. So, come on. Yeah. Say if this is your this is your tree. Okay, and the node is marked if it has lost already lost child once. Do you remember now? You mark the node if it has lost child. So lost child when when does a node uh, node's child is lost? 
so suppose if you decrease the value of any of the nodes and it violates the heap property then you need and the parent of the node is already marked that means earlier also it has lost a child in that case you definitely this if it is less than 26 now you have to cut and add it to the root list and also because 26 is already marked you have to cut and add it to the root list and unmark 26 and you keep doing this till you reach the root do you now remember do you now remember say yes or no or something put it in the chat if you don't remember then I will have to discuss this operation first. Nobody remembers this? Let me go back again then to this PPT. So your heap data structure contains set of mark nodes. It is a Boolean value. You keep it true or false. Okay. And the main idea is to keep the uh, to keep the individual uh, trees flat. Okay. And when do we use this? You insert function. you have a decrease function okay decrease enable you to decrease the uh, the value of the node okay so the value is 26 and suppose the value of say you want to decrease 46 to 29 so what do you do you compare for 29 with its parent that is 24 if this is still in heap order nothing is to be done and the time taken by this operation will be order of one okay now if you the min pointer need not be changed in this case now coming to the next that you now decrease the same value 29 you instead of 26 now you decrease it to 15 you compare 15 with its parent okay and uh, 15 is less than parent you don't do heapification like in uh, like in a binary heap you cut this 25 this child 15 you cut it from here and you move it to the root list and whenever you cut any child you make if the parent is not marked you make it marked and you stop okay so all this operation will take how much time it will take so one operation to cut and one operation to cut and put it here and the other operation to check whether it is marked and to make it marked. So there are two operations. That's why corresponding to every marked, there were actually two operations that took place. That's why that T or R plus 2M in our potential function. Okay. So now you bring it here and you need to check P. If the parent P is unmarked, that means now you mark it. Mark indicates that it has lost its one child till now. Okay, now what is the significance of this? So at this point, you stop here by if it is unmarked, you mark it and you come out of the algo. Let's take another situation. You want to change 35 to 5. Okay, so the first operation remains same. Cut 35 from here, bring it to the root list. Operation 1. Operation two is compare the parent, uh, check the parent is marked or unmarked. If it is unmarked, you have to make it mark and exit. But in this case, it is marked already. If the parent is marked, means earlier also the parent has lost a child. In that case, you have to cut this 26 also from 24 and attach it to the root list. Go to the parent of parent, which is also marked, cut and attach it till the parent is root. At root, you stop. Okay. So, this is what will happen. 5. So, 5 goes there. 
26 is already marked, so you need to cut 25, 26 also and unmark it. So cut, unmark. So these are two operations. That why, that's why the number of marked operations we say are you're adding 2M to your credit in the potential, okay, in the potential function. And now you will come to 24. 24 is the, so you have cut, 24 is already marked, so 24 should also be cut from here and attached. And now if the parent is root, then you stop. Okay. So this is the operation that, are, that is required by a decrease function. And decrease function is going to make use of your marked nodes. And marked nodes are nodes which have been, which have lost one child earlier, only one child. Okay, so that was your mark function. And each mark function, there must be, will make you do two operations in future. Like total number of roots are going to make you consolidate them. So your consolidation is going to be proportional to the total number of roots you have. Similarly, uh, Depending, so total number of marked nodes are also ultimately going to be attached by every decrease operation. There will be, first of all, two operations performed and they get added to your root list. And so they will also add to your consolidation cost somewhere in future. Okay. So that is why your consolidation function has total number of roots or total number of trees plus 2 into n is the formula for the potential function. So now let's come to the analysis so total cost of any amortized cost is the true cost of any operation plus the difference in potential okay this is the formula now coming to the amortized cost of uh, of delete operation so let's yesterday we were here so let's try to write down what are the operations what are the steps that you perform when you de perform any delete operation okay so this is our uh, you are trying to find the amortized cost for delete operation what are the steps that you perform when you do delete so one is that you cut that root cut that min root okay and the second operation that you perform is you attach all children to root list okay third operation is consolidate fourth operation is find new min yes so so this is what happens when you, these are the four steps that take place when you do, when you do, uh, when you do Fibonacci decrease, okay. Oh, sorry, not decrease, when you do delete. So determine the min, then meld, uh, add to the root list, update, consolidate. These are the operations that you are doing. So each of these operations is going to take some time. And they are also going to change your they are also going to change your, uh, uh, change the potential function, okay? So let's try to write here, each, for each one of this, what is the true cost and what is the change in delta or change in the potential, okay, by each of this. So when you cut the root node, it will take order of one time because you can easily go to the root node. You are having a min pointer already pointing to the min node and you are removing it. So what will be the change in potential function? The potential function is the total number of roots or trees plus two total number of marks, no, mark nodes. Can you tell what will be the change in potential function? What will be the change in potential function by just cutting the root operation? Uh, 
how will the potential function change this is this was your three and you remove three how will just removing three we are not looking at the other things now so if you remove three what will be the change in potential function Yeah, somebody, if you switch on your mic and reply, it will be better. One or three. Why one or three? Uh, one, because now there is one less root. It will be minus one. Yeah. Huh, minus one. Oh. Minus one. One less root. So root, number of roots had reduced by one. Mark notes, we did not change anything. We do did not do anything to it. So the change in potential will be minus one. Okay. Ma'am, but uh, if the that min root is marked, then min root is marked. If, if the yeah, so if the min root is marked, then what will happen? Minus three would be there. I think. So so can you give me a can you give me expression? So can we say that it will be less than so if it if it is can we say it will be less than equal to minus one yeah minus three so equal to minus one yes yeah so minus three nahi jitne uh so or will it be zero okay so will it be less than minus one or will it be greater than equal to because only one node your only this node if this is marked if this is marked node you're talking only about this node so then you remove this so number of marked nodes minus one minus three correct so can we say this instead yeah we can say that it will be less than equal to minus one okay so let's leave this here for time being now now let's see uh, the second operation is that you have to move all the children to the root node okay so uh, we discussed something about that there are uh, different parameters we said that in the beginning yeah this so deg degree of x is the number of children degree of the tree we were talking about mark x and we were saying that tree has yeah so the degree of this heap is the equal to the maximum rank of any of the nodes yes this is the degree okay so let's call it that let's call that degree of the heap h let's call it as d max some variable d max it is some value numeric value correct so the maximum number of children that you need to move and attach will not be more than d max do you agree the maximum number of the upper bound or the worst case complexity of attaching all the children of the min root that you have just removed to the circular doubly linked list will not be more than d max so the worst case complexity will be order of d do you agree with this where d max is the degree of was the degree of h do you agree please tell yes now if this is happening then can you tell now what will be the change in potential what will be the change in potential now you add d max node so this adds to your root list they all become part of the root now okay they all become part of the root list now hmm. so ye jo 1852 ye the ye root mein add ho gaye okay so this the maximum number of children that any of the any of the nodes any of the root any of the trees cannot be more than d max so we are assuming that maximum what you added was d max so maximum change in the number of roots or trees is d max what can you say about the change in uh, in the in the marked nodes 
what can you tell about the change in the mark note no change you may lose so when you why no change because say some of these root notes which were marked when you bring them to root they now should be uh, you may lose some of the uh, some of the marked notes in this case okay here they haven't shown but you when you bring it here you may lose the marked note okay when you bring the root node uh, which is uh, when you bring the intermediate but, uh, are we changing the mark status when we uh, attach to the root list uh here we are saying that we are not changing here we are not changing so here we haven't changed uh so let's continue with that so if we are not changing then what will happen so the maximum change that happened uh is that you have uh, only increased the total number of root nodes and so the change in potential will be plus d max okay or can it be uh, can you be adding some nodes uh, is it possible to lose some of the mark nodes no we are saying okay no so let, let it be d max only now so this is the change in potential now let's come back come here let's come to the consolidation part okay so how will the consolidation take place how will be the consolidation taking place so if you look at the consolidation uh, process that we saw uh, you have you have these number of roots okay so when you start consolidation there may be some say t number of uh, t number of nodes that you have in your heap okay let's say you have when you started you have t nodes in the tree okay and you perform some d merges okay you are going to merge okay and uh, say you performed some m merges why do you, you say performed m merges and now the total number of trees in the end that you have is d okay so what are we talking about you started with one two three four five six seven seven trees okay and if you see here whenever we perform we are performing some merge at some point of time okay so no merge happened no merge happened no merge happened here merging happened so somewhere there is merging happening and ultimately the total number of trees that you are left with is 1 to 1 to 3 okay ultimately you are left with three trees in this so is there any relationship between the number of trees that you had in the beginning you, the original number of trees the number of merges that you took place that happened and the total number of trees that you have now okay why are we considering this because we are iterating through each of these trees we are going through this then this then this then this so we are going to going to go through t trees if there are t trees we are going to go through each one of them and when we go through each one of them we are going to perform m number of merges okay some m merges and ulti ultimately we are coming out with uh, d number of trees so can we find out some relation between them so let's take a example and try to find out a relation between t m and d uh manlo ek tree tha ek tree tha ye ye hamara doubly linked list tha so isko do do the matlab uh, t was two okay you merge this because they are of same degree so you perform one merge and the tree that you get now is this okay now suppose you had this and this tree okay so number of trees is 2 and you added one more node so what will happen now so 1 2 3 you started with t equal to 3 one merge will give you this okay another merge will give you this 
correct? So total number of merges that you did is two, and ultimately the number of trees that you got is one. So you started with two trees, number of merges that happened was one, and number of trees after merges is one. Is there any relationship? Is there any relationship between T, T and M? Is there any relationship between T, D, M and T equal to D plus N? Who said that? Equal to R, you. Okay, very good, R, you. So the relationship is equal to T equal to D plus N. Okay, can you prove it for any number of nodes? Suppose you start with four trees and you end up in the end, you do two merges, definitely you will get two trees in the end. You can draw and check or you can apply some logic and check that T is equal to D plus N. Okay, so we are, so the total cost of consolidation will be will be big o of the total number of trees because you are going to iterate through each one of them plus total number of merges that you do okay and also ultimately these d nodes you copy back into the circular double link list okay but this uh, m plus d or t is equal to m plus d anyway. So we can say that this is equal to order of m plus d. Okay, this is equal to order of m plus d. So consolidation operation is e going to take time m plus d where m is number of merges and d is number of trees that you get after merging. Okay. So now can you tell the change in potential after this consolidation, what will be the change in potential after you perform the consolidation? Anyone? Change in potential. So before consolidation, we said there are T trees. Okay, and there may be M mark node. So the potential was T into 2M. Oh, sorry, T plus 2M. Okay. So the potential was this T into total number of mark nodes, 2 into total number of mark nodes. So it was T in, sorry, T to M. Okay. So now how many trees do we have? We have only, we have only, can you tell? How many trees less do we have? We have M trees less. Do you agree? We will have the total number. So D equal to M plus D. Okay. So uh, D, the total number of trees we have now is equal to T minus M after merging happens. So the change in number of trees is minus M change in number of trees is minus m. We did not do anything to the mark node while consolidation. So whatever mark node we had before consolidation and after consolidation remains same. Okay. Now, if you rewrite these two things, rewrite in the sense, if you find the, let's come to this later. So if you find again, if you rewrite again, so consolidation took time order of m plus t, and the change in potential was uh, minus M. Okay. And now when you do amortized cost of, of the true cost and the change in potential cost summation, the cost will be order of T. Ye dono cancel out each other by rules of amortized complexity analysis. And what is D? D is nothing but your D max. D max is the maximum degree and the maximum degree possible is log n. Okay, so delete operation is going to take 
block and time. Whereas if you see, okay, find min, find new min will take how much time? Find new min will take how much time? So there are now D trees, okay? You have to find out the minimum from these D trees. So order of D plus order of D is again order of D itself. And if you see here, this is constant. This is constant. So this result is constant. Okay, attaching what all children is also order of D. Okay, now order of D and here also you have order of P. So the amortized cost is combination of all this order of 1 plus order of D plus order of D plus order of D. It will be order of D only. Any doubt? Any doubt? So this is how we are using amortized costs to show that the total time required for delete operation is coming out to be still order of D. So including your uh, cutting the minimum, promoting the children of the main root to the root list and then performing cleanup or consolidation or merging operation altogether is going to take order of D max time where D max will be equal to log n. So now let's look at the decrease key. Uh, I'm drawing one, one tree for you all and I want uh, you to hit the changes in the tree. Yeah. My screen is not visible. No, no, no. I'm, I've stopped sharing. I'm sharing now. Okay. So I'm sharing the screen now. So I am going to draw a tree and I'll ask you to uh, perform the decrease operation a couple of times and then draw the resultant tree. Everybody do, do this please. So this is the tree, 13, 8, write all the parameters of this tree. What are the different values that you need? to store so. is marked as yet okay where should be your min Min should be here write out write down first of all all the different values what are the different values what is your min pointing at what is the degree of the tree h then what is the value of the potential function and uh, yeah, number of mark nodes, number of root nodes or number of trees, okay. Write out all these, write down all these values first. And uh, then, right, uh, what else you need to write, you can note it down from here. Beginning the, so left, right, this is matter of uh, implementation. Yeah, number of, number of nodes degree of each node, number of trees, min, and number of mark nodes, okay? So, n, n is the number of nodes. So, write down all this and then make these changes, okay? So, one operation that you perform on this is you delete min. And tell me all these parameters and tell the change in the potential, okay? Second operation that you perform is you decrease value of 45, one second, huh? one second, let me put few more notes here.
let these be nodes okay now you decrease a uh, value of 32 to 50 okay then you decrease value of then you decrease value of 61 to 16 and change, tell me all these parameters again Just quickly so that you know how how you have to do it on paper. So in exam, I may give you straight away five mark question where I give you different trees to UP one generated randomly to different values, and I ask you to perform some set of operations and give me the final results. Okay. Yes, just got a message from Abhijit sir. I borrow name. So, Sangha, Kaika Yale min will be at two. Degree of H will be the highest degree, that is three. Pi will be uh, number of root nodes plus two into number of mark nodes. So, ye to zero hai. So, number of root nodes is one, two, three, four, five. M will be 0, number of root nodes is 5, and N, total number of nodes is, you just have to count and write here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, just there, okay, value lift to, okay. Ab bolo ki, if you do delete min operation, how does the phi changes? This was what we have to answer. What is the change in phi by delete min operation? So delete mean operation means these three will get added here. There is no change in the marked nodes. Okay. So the total number of nodes will increase by three. So delete min will say uh, the change in delete will be plus three. Change in, change in the potential function will be plus three. And now if you decrease the value of 32 by 15. Okay, so this is 32. This has to change to 15. This is not following getting as mark note and you attach 15 in the tree somewhere. Okay. Do we just attach or should we do consolidate also? Do we consolidate now? Oh, oh, oh I, I'm sorry. When we did dil mean, we have to consolidate. We did not do that. This is wrong. So when you did do dil mean you have to do consolidation. So what is the change in potential anyone? When you delete, this will become your root nodes, they will move up. So for simplicity, let's move this. Let's draw a tree like this now. Let's 
so this is coming from here to here this is your link list now attached to the root list now what will happen how you perform the consolidation so you go from 13 18 these two will get consolidated then 13 will get consolidated with 21 and so on so i want you to draw the consolidated tree and tell me the change in five okay okay i'll leave it as exercise should i leave it as exercise let's see the analysis of decrease function okay let's see you can take image picture of this and do this one later and do it by tomorrow just as a practice on paper so let's do the analysis of decrease function if you come back here on the decrease function so So when you come back to decrease function, here uh, we are not uh, we are not considering the cost of reaching to the to the function to the node which whose value we want to decrease. Okay, so we are starting our our consideration from after you have found this. What are the changes that are done in the tree? And based on that, you have to calculate the amortized cost. So suppose you change 26 here, you change 46 to 29, okay, 46 to 29, one possibility is that there is no change in the tree. So this will take order of one time. This, if this happens, the time will be order of one time, change in phi, change in your potential function will be zero. Now, the second possibility is that the heap order is disturbed and this changes so this there will be after this series of operations that are to be performed so after you do this you need to cut this and attach this here which will take a constant time you need to cut and attach here which will take constant time but when you cut this and attach it here your number of uh, your potential function changes by one okay, your potential function because your root number of roots will increase at this point then what do you do after you do this so we have the next situation so you do this and uh, yes you need to update the min that will take constant time because jo bhi attach cut karke yahan dala hai, you have to compare min with that and you have to decide whether this remains your min or your min changes okay so that is also going to take constant time because only one comparison now uh, the other situation is that uh, you don't stop here, whereas you have series of ancestors which are marked as, uh, which are marked, which are all marked, okay, which are all marked, which are marked, marked positive. So you have to go through these all L ancestors. You have to go through all these L ancestors, okay, and all these L ancestors add to the root list. But they, when you add them to the root list, you lose them from the marked nodes. They become unmarked. Okay. So what will be the change in potential in this case? So we are going to consider all these possibilities in the analysis of decrease key operation. Okay. So let's come back here. And so when you do decrease key, Again, you have to consider what is the true cost of doing any operation and what is the change in the potential. Okay? These two together will give you amortized cost. Okay? So one first function was that you actually decrease the value. Just decrease the value and uh, there is no movement required. So decrease to karna hai. Okay, so that is going to take constant time. So we assume that after you decrease, there was no change in the tree. Okay, no change in the 
heap or the tree. Okay. So the true cost will of doing this will be order of one and the change in this will be zero. Okay. So zero means uh, zero, not zero. Okay. No change in uh, phi. Now the second possibility is so if this did not does not happen, uh, you need to so there is a possibility there are changes to be done. So one possibility is parent is not marked. Parent is not marked. And if parent is not marked, then you just have to cut and attach that child to the root list and compare with the minimum and set the minimum. Now both these operations are uh, having constant time operation. Okay, so the time required will be order of one, but uh, the change in potential will be. Uh, so if the parent, if the parent is not marked, the change in potential will be uh, because you're increasing number of your cutting and attaching it. The number of trees will go up by one. Okay. So marked may there is no change happening only number of trees so t plus 2 into m only number of trees is increasing this is not changing this is increasing by 1 so the number of mark uh, the number of trees in the change in potential is plus 1. Okay. Now if the parent is marked okay, so so this is also constant time in both the cases this is almost constant time. Third possibility is the parent is marked. Okay. Then what do you do? If the parent is marked and so you have to uh, like happened in this case, you have to go through all these nodes. Okay. So, so let's assume that you have a tree like this. This is the tree. There can be anything, anything, anything here. Okay. So, and you, you cut this. This was marked. This was marked. This was marked. This was marked. So, there may be L such parents which are marked up to the root. Okay. There may be, suppose, L such parents which are marked. So, what do you have to do? You have to cut each parent, bring it here, unmark it. Cut this parent, bring it here, sorry, unmark it. Uh, cut this parent, bring it here. So how many times, what will be the complexity of this? It will be proportional to N, L, that is the number of this list or number of ancestors that you have. So you can say that it is equal to order of L. Okay. Can you tell what will be the change in potential? What will be the change in potential when you bring all these here? So, anyone? Number of trees is going up by L because all these L ancestors which were all marked, they are becoming, coming into the root list now. So, you have root list now. They are coming into the root list. So, L is increasing but we are losing some marked nodes. So all these which were marked are now not unmarked. Okay. So how many nodes, marked nodes did we lose? We lost L marked nodes only. Okay. L marked nodes we lost. So, but then in our potential function, the change will be uh, minus of 2L. So it will be minus 2 into L. Okay. We lost 2 into L mark notes well, we mark we lost l mark notes so by this formula we have to say minus 2l and so the change in potential will be minus l now if you see the total complexity of this will be order of 1 okay, the total complexity will be order of 1 come down to order of 1. So that is the that is how the amortized complexity of decrease operation. So ye wala, ye wala order of 1 hai, ye order of 1 hai, 
x is also l because you have kept this function as plus 2m uh, you are losing the total number of mark notes you are increasing you are losing by 2m and you are increasing by l so total amortized complexity is minus l because this means that in future you won't have to do this operation if you decrease because now there are lesser number of marked notes so in future when you do decrease there will be it will take less cost less number of operations to do the decrease okay so that's how you are keeping the accounts by using making use of the potential function and you come out with the amortized time complexity of decrease operation as order of 5. Is it clear? So I am going to share one analysis while of PDF. It is there very well mentioned, written in your comment book also. So go through that and if there are any doubts. So why the name Fibonacci CD? Why the name Fibonacci heap? And what relation it has with Fibonacci heap? see that and continue with our next topic any doubts any doubts anyone should we stop <laughs>